presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hey, Robin, how you doing, man? Yes, good, and thank you for taking my call. I wanted to Morning. let you know that I've been a subscriber for a couple of years, just different members of your team, and I really enjoy it. But really the reason I'm calling is to express my sincerest gratitude for you providing that information information yesterday on the small business grant. I'm a small business owner and primary breadwinner for my family. And if I can get that money, it's going to really mean a lot to my family. So that's awesome. Thank you for uh, taking the time to do that. No, well, well, listen, man, we appreciate you growling a problem with us. Now, Tom O'Brien. What's going on, everyone? This is James. You're filling in Tom O'Brien. I hope you all are having a good day. We have a nice show in store for you today. Of course, we've got Tim Ward on in the second segment. We'll take as much time as we need with him. Of course, there's a lot of uh, nice stuff, particularly in gold, uh, coming around. Let me turn this down a little bit. If you look at the gold contract right now, okay, you're trading at about 0.5%. You're up near the all-time highs. Okay, we're trading at 2,704. We're trading at 2, oh, man, 2,712, a little bit earlier in the session. Come down a little bit, and then the miners are actually doing okay. Well, GDX of about, I think, 1.3, okay, 1.34% right now. And then I saw VGC was doing okay today. And it's nice seeing this kind of pullback. You know what I mean? You have a lot of volatility in these VGC coming off at a high of 82 cents. There's a lot of volatility in some of these days, but also pretty low volume. It's still closing quite above uh, the leg down here. So that's nice seeing VGC. Probably setting up a move higher again, going to test um, essentially the high of the day. Let's see, I also didn't have my mic on. Look at that. Thank you, my producer, for telling me that. Uh, let's take a look as well of Harmony. So Harmony, okay, that's not going to be it, is also having an exceptionally stellar day, trading up at 8.46%. So it seems like the gold stocks, uh, at least the miners, are kind of waking up a little bit, uh, which is super nice, of course, if you've been following along the Tom O'Brien show when Tim Ord comes on, and you've also been reading the gold report. Of course, this is kind of what we've been looking for uh, really for a few months now. You've had such a historic rise up in the gold contract, and it takes a little bit of time for the miners to essentially start producing at these kind of levels, right? You want to make sure it holds at this kind of level. They can start producing pretty uh, profitably at these kind of elevated spot prices. And so it seems like, you know, with this pretty sustained trading, I mean, what we traced back really when we got to the 2700 to about you know, like 26, 22, something along there and came right back up on it. So it'd be nice to see some of the miners wake up on that. Let's look at the composite real quick, up about 0.28%, Dow Jones Industrial up about 0.41%. Dollar still moving higher, trading at 103.80. And then crude kind of just petering off a little bit, uh, moving uh, really sideways after quite a volatile uh, two weeks. You just had um, the assassination, one of the Hezbollah guys. What else? It just, it seems like the, the situation uh, won't be as dire on the long term. And it seems like a lot of the invasion going on in Lebanon, uh, in a sense, was, was probably a diversion in order to get this guy. Of course, you also are kind of in a positive situation, and, and I mean this more in, in, in a bearish way, for, for gold, uh, it's along the lines of Israel, when they attack, Iran would not really target the oil infrastructure, which is good. We spoke about this at length. If you, if you missed kind of the exposition on this, I spoke about it earlier this week, and go watch uh, the archive of that, and then we had Elliot Wellenbach of uh, Direction on yesterday, and we spoke about that a little bit at length as well. And then you have the E-mini, kind of up about 0.11% right now, right under that 5,900 mark. You're seeing that 30-year bond tank as rates are kind of coming up a little bit. Let's talk about just the general macroeconomic situation. Retail sales rose 0.4% in September. That was better than expected in the jobless claims dip. Let's see, what else was it? Yeah, you have treasury yields are climbing, strong data. 
And then really, a, a lot of the growth, the U.S. shoppers are just spending a, a lot more. And this massive rate cut, you know, these 50 basis points and the idea we're going to do 25-25 are, again, kind of predicated on this idea that people are kind of shaking a little bit. And then the job market needed to be saved. It, it looks, I would say, that that was probably kind of an irregular month. I think the numbers were just so intense that the Fed was very concerned that that lag was finally catching up and that they were being uh, perhaps a little bit too restrictive. I still think the major issue that we, that we see is that you can still have persistent inflation for a longer period of time. I, I don't know so much if it's the uh, total collapse of the job market um, I think as it stands now, I mean, the jobless claims are, are dipping, but it seems very difficult to get a job. I think that if inflation isn't dealt with, right, and we keep kind of going at these kind of rates for a long time, and inflation is floating a little bit above that 2% level, there either needs to be an adjustment uh, or we run into an issue where you really do get like a no hire, no fire uh, kind of economy. And this is not really what we want uh, in any capacity. Let's take a look quickly at Lucid. It was funny because we were just talking about that on YouTube yesterday or two days ago. Yeah, so we're off nearly 20%, off about 18.9%. Uh, so they sank on Q3 lost forecasts, and they're doing a stock offering as well. They need to get some more money. Uh, this is always bad just for these kind of companies. Let's see our first electric vehicle manufacturer projected a wider than expected third quarter loss. And then second, the company revealed plans uh, for a public stock offering of nearly, wow, 262.5 million additional shares. So really diluting that. Not something you want to see uh, from a stock that you hold. Let's talk a little bit as well before we get to the break here is TSMC. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about this as, excuse me, it's TSM. When we finish up with Tim Ward, but as you can see, and this is kind of what I was saying the other day with ASML when people were kind of freaking out. You had NVIDIA sell off from it. Um, you had a TSM sell off from it because of the bad demand for ASML products. The one way that I think you, you kind of got to look at this, right? And I was a proponent of, you know, essentially, I mean, you can't really call that a dip, right? You just had a few down days because NVIDIA sold off, uh, I think, roughly 5%. But ASML is just developing the tech to make the things. I mean, it's the same way as, you know, you have a bunch of farmers no longer buying tractors. It doesn't mean nobody's growing anything anymore. It just means you're at kind of a saturation point for the materials used, uh, you know, especially the large materials used to create these kind of things. A way better bellwether for this industry is, you know, one, the demand for NVIDIA chips really any chips, but NVIDIA is so outspoken, right? I mean, they talked about there's massive demand for uh, the Blackwell chips. Now, of course, that could always be trumped up by CEOs, um, but the way he was talking about it, uh, you wouldn't really expect that to be the case. If that demand is still there, TSM can continue to operate totally fine. They already have the lithography machines, and there's no new kind of chips being produced that require different lithography machines as it stands now. Anyways, trading up 11.16%. We're going to get Tim Ord on the phone with us. We'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archive live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. 
But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, everyone. Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We're about to have Tim Ord on the line for you. Just a moment. Take a look just real quick uh, to wrap things up on TSM. I'm about 11.08%. Uh, so let's take a look here. The forecast from the leading producer of the advanced AI chips reinforced investor confidence. Of course, uh, they uh, raised their expectations for annual revenue growth and said sales from AI chips would account for mid-teen percentage of its full-year revenue. Trying to read what else out, and then they said they're talking about Intel. For some reason, people who don't listen to TFNN also got in on Intel on this, up 1.26 percent. Not really that much um, on this kind of news. This doesn't matter. This doesn't matter because we we learned from the issues with Qualcomm again that Intel is not able to effectively um, mass produce some of these higher end chips that are going to be coming into the market, especially in the next five years. Don't get fooled by that at all. But yeah, as it stands, I mean, as long as people want these Blackwell chips from NVIDIA, which they absolutely do, uh, TSM is going to be in business. It doesn't matter if ASML has a few bad quarters or a bad year because they're selling very large machines that are, are, are used to make you know millions and millions of sets of these things. So don't use that as an indicator in any way. Uh, we'll take a look, too, actually, at Givo. So I had not heard of this company at all. Oh, actually, we will do that uh, when we are done. Now, let's go over here, folks, real quick. We're going to go type in and the URL bar, ord-oracle.com. Now, Tim Ord comes on the show every Tuesday and Thursday. Of course, we had him on yesterday, uh, but it's actually nice to have him on today because, of course, we have some pretty interesting movements in gold, at least. And then again, uh, you can go over to tfnn.com, go to the services tab, we have two fantastic webinars uh, from Tim Orr. That is the secret science of market tops. And then the six secret ratios every trader should know. Those are for a fantastic price of $149. And again, you can watch these things over and over and over again and really learn how Tim uh, kind of approaches chart making. Tim, how are you doing? Good, good. So we talk again. So I, I'm, I'm happy to. recess and we're back at it. That's so. right. And like I was saying with gold, I think there's some interesting stuff to look at today, but I'm curious to hear what you have to say overall. So I got the charts up for you right now. All right. Well, it's, it's kind of a repeat from yesterday. Yeah. We were looking at, um, and I was just bringing you up to speed, uh, the first chart uh, is the uh, 2020 election where Trump was a candidate and Biden. And uh, anyhow, I have a, a shaded area there in pink. And, uh, and I got well, two red lines there, basically the second red lines that going into the November 
the election of 2020, and, uh, and, uh, and the top window is the RSI for the SPX tilt ratio. And so that ratio uh, is actually important. Uh, uh, the RSI got down to around the 30 area, and every time that has happened, it actually gives a better signal. Uh, hang on for one second. That is not TFNN calling him, folks. Yeah, and again, if you <laughs> missed it. <laughs> but, anyhow, but anyhow, every time the RSI gets around 30 of that ratio, a bottom in the market is near. Uh, a lot of times uh, it gets within usually a day or so of the low, but it shows uh, the uh, uh, tilt, which is a bond market, going down a, a high percentage compared to what the SPX is doing, and that's the sign of panic, and panic only forms at bottoms. And that's the reason why that ratio works. So I'm measuring the equity market compared to the um, uh, bond market. So anyhow, it works pretty well. Um, for the bottom window is the 10-day average of the trend. Mm -hmm. And I always said, if you don't have panic in the market, there's uh, you're not at a low. And for some reason, the 2016-2020 lows did not show the 10-day trend getting up around 1.2. I don't know why, but it's, it's kind of an anomaly, I guess, because this only happens every four years. But it, the uh, trend did not show panic. But the SPX tilt ratio RSI did show panic. So let's flip to chart two. Yeah. Um, uh, this is the uh, election again. Trump's the candidate. Clinton's this time uh, the other candidate. And same thing happened. The RSI goes back, back down to 30 on the SPX ratio. And the bottom window, which is the 10 day trend, did not get into uh, the bullish territory up around 1.2. So I was looking for indicators that gave the signal. Um, when the bottom occurred for the election. So it, it does appear the SPX tilt RSI ratio uh, will, will uh, most likely will give the signal. So that's what I'm be looking for. So what's going to happen between now and the election? So let's take a look at that, which yes. is, uh, or actually the next chart is the current situation we're in right now, which is uh, this ratio again and we did just recently uh get an rsi reading above 70 we had i think 82 on monday we've since backed off but ultimately i expect this rsi to get around 30 somewhere probably end of this month or at latest first of, of november november 5th is election and um i'm thinking we may Previously, I thought we may get down to the, I think it was uh, October 8th low. There's the gap there. I did a little bit more work on it. And there's another gap actually lower comes in. I uh, forget exactly what date it was. Well, it's, it's, it's around uh, September. It's actually, it was September 19th. There's the gap there. And I, I got it shaded. Uh, and I got a gap right next to that shaded area. I'm looking at the SP, SPX um right now and it's also that gap comes at the previous highs of august and the previous high of july which is around that 560 area uh, or 5600 on the spx and i think that's probably a more likely target previously had uh, uh 5650 area i think we'll actually get down to 56 area okay uh, so that, that's a potential area uh, that's an ideal place for the rsi to get around 30 in that vicinity uh, so and I'll be doing some volume analysis as we approach that. So, but that's a possible downside target in of October, first November, around the 5600 on the SPX. So let's see how it works. I didn't attempt to play the long here over the last couple of weeks because a lot of times you go into these big elections, right? Or basically, a big news event. The market gets kind of wonky uh, sometimes. It gets kind of unpredictable so i didn't play the long side uh, but it actually if i did play the long side it worked out all right but, but um, sometimes uh, i looked at previously sometimes the get moves are just a little bit bizarre so i didn't play right. the long side but anyhow i am aligning putting quite a bit of energy to find the next low so um it should it should work out uh we got not too much time here left yeah well, we can move over to the vix quickly you just kind of 
talk about. But what I really want right. to say is like that does that does make sense. And I think there have also been really some super unique factors, you know, beyond just kind of, you know, how America usually operates on this. I mean, you have a lot of capital flight coming from outside of the country. Uh, that's kind of unique during this time. Uh, so I definitely see what you're saying. And, and traditionally, yes, like wonky time to be uh, going long the market right. at least. But Tim, stay right there. We'll be right back, folks. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle after this break. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tom O'Brien Show is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, everyone. I am joined by Tim Ord right now, the Ord Oracle. Tim, before we went to the break, uh, we we're just about to get to chart four, looking at the VIX. Uh, all right. Uh, can you hear me okay? I can. You sound great. All right. Good. Uh, oh, yeah. Chart uh, four. 
this is the VIX. Uh, we kind of went over it uh, yesterday, and this is kind of a repeat. Shows you this last rally up from uh, early October to where we are right now. If you notice, uh, uh, the top window is the SPX ratio. The SPs made higher highs. That ratio made lower highs. But normally, when that happens, you get a pullback at some point, and that's probably what's going to happen here. So, and I got that red trend line. Uh, was the bottom one was the SPY, and I have a red trend line, dotted trend line going across the chart, right around that uh, 560 area, which is where that gap lies, which is where the previous high. So there's a lot of information there to suggest that could turn into a low. Um, where it gets there or not, I uh, don't know, but most likely it probably will. And if it does, and the SPX or the SPX uh, tilt ratio RSI gets around 30, that'd be quite a bit of information to suggest that area has support. And so that may be where the next buy is going to be generated. So uh, we'll see how all that works out. Uh, we got a couple of weeks to go. So, but the market upside has stalled. Um, so we're starting to build some sort of a high here. So anyhow, that's my evaluations on the um, SPY over the next couple of weeks. So we'll see how uh, that turns out. So let's get to the gold market. Absolutely. And, uh, oh, actually, nope. This is oh, this, still on the uh, yeah, SPY. NYSI, yeah. The, uh, still on the market here as far as the equity market goes. And the only thing I want to show you here is the chart's a little bit messy. Uh, the chart goes back to 2007. And I have uh, green shaded areas on the chart. And the reason why I put that green shaded areas, that's the times when the uh, NYSE summation index did get above 1,000 without going below minus 700 first. In other words, this sign of strength kind of came out of nowhere. Normally, you get a, you get a sign of weakness, which is a, a reading below minus 700. Then it jumps to 1,000. And that's an indication that the market has made a major low. The the shaded green areas are times where where the summation just went to without going below 700, just went above a thousand. So those kind of unique times when that happens. A lot of times they come about the midpoint of the move up, and uh, they never they can come at minor highs, but never at major highs. So when it, and the summation it gets to a plus 1,000, it, it basically is a sign of strength, is what I'm trying to I point see. out. And it's never the final high. So we have a sign of strength. This thing was triggered, um, I forgot, I think it was October 1st, uh, yeah, first part of October. So just a couple of weeks ago, we got it, we're back down below 1,000 right now, but it did get a 1,000. So we have a sign of strength in the summation index. So most likely, we'll probably, you know, my opinion, we, before the year's out, my opinion, we probably got another 10% in the market to go higher here. So the market internals are, what I'm saying, is really strong, even though we may have a consolidation here over the next couple of, three, couple of weeks into the election. After that, the market's going to probably really uh, take off to the upside. Right. And this thousand summation index kind of reinforces that idea. So... Um, a little bit of patience over the next couple of weeks, but uh, higher highs are coming uh, probably after the election. So this chart kind of proves that point. So anyhow, um, fantastic. Yeah, higher and, highs are coming. So I just wanted to show that chart. And you were talking about too how you're gonna like you know determine if you're at a, at a high or something like that, right? Or if we're not right now. And again, I, I really do want to bring up right now, if you guys go over to the services tab on tfnn.com. You can get right here the secret signs of market tops with Tim Ord. And Tim, at some point, we should do something on, on bottoming patterns and everything like that. But as it stands now, this is what we got for you guys if you want to learn a little bit more about what Tim is doing here and how he's looking at these charts. Uh, so, Tim, you want to move into gold because I know we have a lot of people who are uh, very interested to hear what you have to say on this. All right. Uh, actually, I've only got a couple of charts here. Yeah. But uh, this... Uh, this is uh, chart number six, <coughs> and uh, uh, been playing gold for a long time and, and tried a lot of different types of indicators, but this one seems to work really the best that I found. And I'm still looking for uh, adding more tools uh, because this is kind of a lifelong learning process that really how to figure out what works in the market. But anyhow, the bottom window 
is the 50 day average of the up down volume. Next higher window is 50 day average of the up down or of, of advanced decline. But what seems to work the best is the up down volume. Uh, this chart goes back to mid 2018. And what I found out when this indicator is above zero, uh, I just put this chart up, uh, I don't know, a couple hours ago, it was plus 17. It only has to stay above zero. And when it's above zero, the uptrend GDX is in force. So even on a short term basis here, um, a lot of times this GDX will start going, will actually go up and this indicator will go down. That would be a, a sign that weakness is coming in GDX. Well, that's not happening here. GDX is pretty much setting at its recent high. It's actually setting at the 2022 high and actually 2020 high up around, around this 40 area. And this indicator is staying solidly above zero. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, there's not even on a short term basis here, I'm not showing any weakness at all. Uh, so, uh, will the market get stronger? Uh, actually could. So a lot of times when you go up against previous highs, which we're at right now, again, we're at the 2022 high and a 2020 high up around this 40 area, we may actually see the market actually get stronger. And that's what's supposed to happen once you test go up against the previous high, you want the market actually to build strength and it appears that's what's happening here and to get through a previous high it, what needs to happen is a sign of strength so the market actually volume wise and advanced decline wise and actually up down volume wise needs to increase here and that's appears of what's happening here so there may be on a short term basis here acceleration uh, through this 40 area so that's kind of what it appears to be happening right here. I don't see any signs of a top of any consequence because the market's actually making higher highs and higher lows back to going back since uh, April of this year. And that's the definition of an uptrend. So not seeing any weakness. I think the market appears to be getting a little bit stronger. So uh, we may see a, a, a push higher maybe going into the election here because uh, most candidates suggest that money supply will still be expanding here. That's what's bullish for gold. Right. I hear the music. Yeah, Tim, stay right there. I know we have another chart to go over, uh, but stay right there. We'll finish it when we get back. Folks, we'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. 
a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm Orion! Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup. I am joined by Tim Ward. If you're watching us on YouTube right now on Tiger Financial News Network, and you haven't already, please go ahead and give this stream a thumbs up and give us a subscribe. It helps us out immensely and helps Tim out as well. Tim. We, have, we were on uh, the first GDX ADP chart, and I know we have one more as well. I didn't know if you had any other kind of closing thoughts on uh, the first gold chart before we get to the last one. First one here, this is kind of a short-term uh, indicator. It doesn't try to uh, – I have real short-term indicators. This indicator kind of catches the trend pretty good, and right now that trend is up on a on – a, until it falls below zero so it's not showing any signs of weakening on a short-term basis so let's look at the bigger picture yep. which is the last chart and uh, this chart goes back to 2007 let me get a drink here anyhow it's a monthly chart it looks at the bigger picture and uh, it gets a signal it usually stays on that signal for a year and a half at a minimum and uh, some can last as long as four years. But uh, anyhow, the green areas are times. Uh, let's describe what we're looking at. The bottom window is the uh, cumulative up-down volume uh, for GDX on a monthly time frame. Next window higher is the cumulative advanced decline on a monthly time frame for GDX. And I put a Bollinger Band on both those indicators. And when the market is above the Bollinger Band, or both those indicators are above the Bollinger Bands. That's a buy signal and an uptrend in, in progress, uh, which is shaded green. And the pink areas are times when both indicators are below the mid Bollinger Band on the monthly time frame. It's a sell signal. So you can see what's kind of going on here. Last time a signal for this one was generated, the last time was 2021. It gave a sell signal looks like about January 2021 stayed on a sell signal until uh, this year I think it was April when it triggered uh, maybe April May I forgot which it was but anyhow earlier this year he gave a buy signal as both indicators closed above the monthly mid Bollinger band and as you can see where they are right now they're way above the mid Bollinger band it's not even close to showing any weakness here right so like I said a year and a half uh, so this will take us April of say that's when it's triggered April. So next April will be one year, add another six months to that. So the earliest possible top would come in October 2025, but it may be 2027 before that signal may be uh, negated. I put it that way. I see. also did some, I don't have it shown, but I did some cycle work and there's a cycle top due in 2027. So we may, see this market go all possible all the way to 2027 that's unimportant right now only thing i know right now the major we're on a major buy signal and we expect that buy signal to last at minimum to october of, of 2025 so there'll be some consolidations along the way but in general uh, they'd be uh, compared to what we had over the last uh, since 2021 they may be pretty mild relatively speaking so uh I noticed also on, uh, I think, 
on yesterday's report, we showed the bullish percent index for the gold miners index and the stocks, uh, 85, I think it was 82% of the stocks remain on buy signals. So there's a lot of gold stocks starting to move up. And uh, I think you're still actually early in the stages of this move up. So um, could be could be extremely rewarding uh, over the next year, year and a half or longer. Yeah, absolutely. So, and we've been following them here quite a bit. I know when Tom releases the gold report, you know, one of the one of the big ones he's always had um, has been definitely moving quite a bit. So it's it's nice to see it. It's nice to see that there's still some pretty good bullish indications for the miners um, because it seems like the spot price is going to continue to go up as well. Um, we'll see what happens. Even with the slowdown in China, and I know this gets to more like, you know, fundamental stuff, but even in the economic slowdown in China, you're still seeing a lot of them, you know, buy gold, which is pretty nice. So, Tim, thank you yeah. so much for, for joining me today. I know we had a two days back-to-back, -back, but it's always good to have you on. So, All right. We'll, we'll talk to you guys on next Tuesday then. Sounds good. So. We'll see you Tuesday, Tim. All right. Thank you. Take care. And so, yeah, guys, um, again, if, if you want to just kind of understand more about what Tim is doing when he's looking at these charts, because, I mean, in my opinion, he's just one of the most, like, elite chartists that are out there. Um, you can go right over to tfnn.com, go to the services tab, as the secret signs of market tops, and then six secret ratios every trader should know. If you buy those, go ahead and send me an email at jacob at tfnn.com, and we'll make sure that you have everything set up. You should be from the purchase, but just to be sure. And then again, you've got to visit ord-oracle.com. You can go to the book, you can contact him. He has his newsletter tab uh, right here. A little bit about him uh, is always fantastic having Tim Ord on. All right. Looking at GVO here right now, the question is, what the heck is this? Why did this blow up, right? And this is kind of fitting into a larger framework that I have where I'm kind of defending some of these, you know, whether it be nascent industries or industries that are maybe having, you know, even like a bad year, such as EVs, for instance, right? I mean, we just looked at Lucid. Lucid got squashed today, right? Uh, Rivian is off about 1% today. Tesla's had been having a bad time. GM has been having a bad time. Again, this is all with EVs. <clears throat> Jivo in particular is uh, a hydrocarbons company. They got a huge investment from the DOE. It's a conditional uh, loan. Take a look if I can see here. Yeah, with this, uh, yeah, with disbursements totaling 1.46 billion. Uh, that's for its net zero one project. With capitalized interest during construction, the DOE loan facility has borrowing capacity of $1.63 billion. Pretty intense. And so what does this company do? In reality, they make something called isobutanol, okay? And isobutanol ideally is going to be able to be used and kind of like cut with general fuel, uh, particularly uh, for jet engines, which would be massive. This is what this blow-up is. Now, I, as I stand right now, have no strong opinion on Jivo, right? Besides the fact that they are a part of this massive push through that the Biden administration <clears throat> is trying to achieve uh, before the election. I mean, the loan office got 400 billion windfall. I, in the, in this as well, the loan program office, which is what Jivo is getting into here. It was turbocharged with the 2022 Inflation Reduction Act and the, the money just <clears throat> continue flow, continues to flow out to these companies. Now, I would say even with the event that Donald Trump wins, right, because obviously all this money is getting poured in through uh, the Biden administration, but even if Trump wins, I mean, you're, you're hearing communication with him between, uh, you know, Elon Musk and kind of stuff like this, and these are American industries, right? And you're seeing some large equity firms trying to gear their portfolios um, in the event of a Trump win, right? It seems like the market is starting to kind of price that in. If that's the case, I, I don't think this is the end all be all uh, for things like EV investments, like lithium investments. I don't know what it stands, you know, like for Jivo and hydrocarbons, uh, but, but no doubt with someone like Elon Musk really whispering in the ear of a potential presidential candidate, uh, really both, right? They're going to need him regardless. Uh, it seems like it's going to be okay for EVs and lithium. As it stands now, this is good for hydrocarbon companies like Jivo. If you want their PDF on how they make this and what isobutanol is, just email me. I'll send it to you. It's pretty interesting. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back for a short segment.
The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee, so what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors don't forget you can listen to tfnn live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv that's tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv welcome back everyone jacob shoot filling in for tom o'brien we are joined by tim Orr today if you missed that or want to go back over uh kind of interview that we had, you can go over to Tiger Financial News Network on YouTube after the end of programming today. Our producer uh, is always hard at work and he's gonna have uh, that segment up for you guys and you can kind of go through it at your own pace. We're looking a little bit at GIVO, they just got some money from the DOE, uh, but we'll take a look right now at GM and another interesting company that's on my radar now. I'm gonna do a little bit more research on it. G is up 0.71%. Uh, they doubled down on the EV batteries and they invested $625 million in a lithium project. That lithium project is in a site called Thacker Pass that's in Humboldt County, Nevada, and it is managed 100% by Lithium Americas. I believe Lithium Americas is a Canadian company, um, or at least in Canada, but it is on the stock exchange here. They're down 1.67% today, trading at 323 so you have some pretty high volume moving up. You have some equally high volume kind of be a little volatile today. What struck me a little bit, okay, so <laughs> I was going to say, this number was not the same a little while ago. Uh, the market cap was so much lower. But even right now, I mean, you have a $625 million, uh, basically direct investment to this company's mine, right? Trading at a market cap of $523 uh, seems kind of like an interesting opportunity. I need to do some more research on it. Okay, and I see here as well with, I need to do some more research on Lithium uh, America itself. I don't know everything it's about. 
Traditionally, I've kind of stayed away a little bit from lithium just because I think it's not totally clear how abundant it will be, right? This is why I do like things like uranium, <clears throat> obviously, because the, the way we get uranium is just the way we're always going to get uranium, right? Where you find deposits and you're going to get that out of the ground and you're going to refine it. Lithium, we're only using brine pits right now, and there are a lot of different methods we could use in order to extract lithium. And that, even if it's higher demand, you know, you might get to a point where you get a significantly higher supply and the money doesn't fly in the way you would hope. But I'm going to take a look at Lithium Americas. I'm going to be on tomorrow. We'll go through that. Folks, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. We'll see you tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Tommy O'Brien. See you then.